वेलकम टू इंग्लिश लेसन विथ डॉक्टर विनम्रता सो विदाउट एनी एडो लेट स्टार्ट विथ वॉट इज अटैंसा एंड वॉट आर द वेरियस टैंसा पैटर्नस सो इन अ पोएट्री ग्रुप ऑफ टू और मोर देन टू लाइन्स आर कॉल्ड स्टैंजास विच आर क्लब्ड टूगेदर इन द फॉर्म ऑफ सम पर्टिकुलर मेट्रिकल पैटर्न और राइम एंड रिदम so these group of lines have these particular structures the rhythm or the meter that we are talking about and pertaining to these structures they are given certain names like there are couplets quatrains uh, tercets three lines tercet two line couplet four line quatrain in the same way there are some other stanza patterns which have some names given to them attributed to them because of their rhythmic pattern or because of their metrical composition so in this way there are n number of stanza patterns which we are going to discuss today in this segment of or in this video of english literature so let's begin starting with the most common form of stanza pattern which is the couplet and its variant the heroic couplet heroic couplet is mostly used in earlier forms of verse writing and uh, even today it is the most common practice or most common form of couplet or stanza pattern used in poetry so let's start with what is a couplet and a heroic couplet see couplet is a pair of two lines which can be rhymed or unrhymed means in any poem if there are two two lines clubbed together we will call those two lines which are clubbed together as a couplet now coming to heroic couplet heroic couplet is also called deca syllabic couplet why because deca 10 syllable that's why deca syllabic 10 syllables pertain to deca syllabic so the couplet is written in iambic pentameter so when i say decasyllabic of course it is pentameter because two syllables combine to make one meter that's why 10 syllables and 5 meter and that meter is also 5 pentameter is also written in iambic form so for understanding heroic couplet you must also understand the various metrical patterns and here the couplet is written in iamb and that too in pentameter this is the most common form of stanza pattern in english and it was generally used for writing heroic deeds and tales in epic forms because earlier form of poetry the most common form of poetry was epic poetry so it was the most common form and uh, it was earlier in the very beginning it was used so it was generally used for narrating epic tales of heroes and their chivalries uh, it also was prevalent in writing heroic poems and uh, heroic couplet was introduced to england by chaucer so chaucer in his uh, canterbury tales and in his legend of good women use this form of stanza pattern then uh, we can also say that john dryden and alexander pope used it a lot and also perfected it so these are the most famous writers who have made heroic couplet uh, what status it has got today in english literature and uh, this is all about what is a couplet and what is a heroic couplet now let's move on to another stanza pattern then we move on to the next form of stanza pattern that is terza rima terza rima is a stanza pattern made up of iambic tercets that is three lines each now we earlier in heroic couplet we were talking about two lines each now we are talking about three lines each so the stanzas will have three lines but again it is written in iambic and it follows the rhyme scheme of a b a b c b c d c d e d 
so that should be the rhyme structure of the poem then only it will be considered as a terza rima so see you have rhythmic patterns as well as metrical compositions plus the number of lines together they form making a terza rima and that's why you see this is an interlocking rhyme scheme because a b a and then b goes to the next stanza b c b then c goes to the next stanza c d c and then d goes to the next stanza and so on and so forth so this is the basic pattern of terza rima now talking about the examples it was first used by dante in his divine comedy in 1320 and other italian poets like boccaccio and petrarch used it a lot it was uh, used by shelley in his poems o to the west wind and triumph of life quatrain and heroic quatrain as the name suggest quatrain means four and uh, it is just like couplet and heroic couplet in couplet we had two lines and heroic couplet was two lines written in iambic pentameter here we have the same four lines most common form of verse comprising of four lines each which can be rhymed or unrhymed or of various rhyming patterns but when these four lines are written in iambic pentameter then it will be called heroic quatrain just like heroic couplet and the most common form of it is grace elegy written in the country churchyard the curfew tolls the knell of parting day so it starts with these lines and uh, then uh, another variant of this quatrain is ballad stanza why ballad stanza is uh, the variant of quatrain form because it comprises of lines of iambic tetrameter which alternate with iambic trimeter so there are four metered lines and three metered lines and they alternate that's why it is also called gv j stanza so there is a difference in the pattern of the uh, metrical composition but it is a variant of quatrain so four lines which alternate with iambic tetrameter and iambic trimeter lines also called as gv j stanza and the most famous of this practice is used in coleridge's rhyme of the ancient mariner so next we have rhyme royal or which is also called as chaucerian stanza rhyme royal as the name suggest was uh, first used by king james 1 of scotland and that's why because it was used by a royal person that's why rhyme royal name was given to it plus chaucer used it a lot that's why chaucerian stanza it is a seven line stanza written in iambic pentameter the most common form of metrical pattern that is iambic pentameter seven lines and there can be three variations of the rhyme scheme it can be a b a b b c c or a b a b b c c or a b a b b c c in any form this stanza can be written in all these three forms and uh, coming to its other details like rhyme royal was named because so because of its used by king james 1 of scotland in the 15th century for his famous poem king square chaucerian stanza was introduced in england by chaucer in his poem trollius and cressida and he also used it in parliament of fowls then other writers who have used it is shakespeare in the lap of lucrine or auden in the shield of achilles so this was about rhyme royal or chaucerian stanza another stanza pattern which is very famous is ottava rima as the name suggests ottava means eight lined and the rhyme scheme which it follows is ab 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 and cc it is a very simple form of stanza pattern just you have to see that 
the rhymes lines are followed in this rhythm plus there are eight lines all together and of course it has derived from italy so it is modeled upon the italian works and the most famous work in english is byron's don juan written in ottawa rima moving on to another stanza pattern which is most important one and most famous one in the english literature and in the form of poetry that is penserian stanza as the name suggests of course it was most commonly used by spencer this is a stanza written in eight iambic pentameter followed by an alexandrine that is iambic hexameter so together it has got nine lines each so the stanza will be of nine lines each and first eight lines will be in iambic pentameter just like the iambic pentameter that we were using in heroic couplet and the last line will be in iambic hexameter one meter more and that's why that line that particular line which is written in iambic hexameter is also called as an alexandrine that is the name given to iambic hexameter line that is the ninth line of the spenserian stanza and the rhyme scheme is a b a b b c b c c so this is the fixed rhyme scheme of a spenserian stanza where you have nine lines each in every stanza first eight lines iambic pentameter and last line iambic hexameter so coming to spenserian stanza of course as the name suggest it was used by spencer in his epic poetry the fairy queen and uh, many other poem poets like keats uses it in his eve of saint agnes shelley uses the pattern in adonius and revolt of islam whereas tennyson uses it in his lotus eaters so this was all about spenserian stanza hence these were the most important and prominent form of stanza patterns which we discussed today in this video lecture not to mention that there are few more like there is sonnet and uh, for sonnet uh, it would require another whole video lecture so i would be making another video lecture on what is a sonnet but for the general inquiry it is a 14 line poem and uh, apart from it there can be other variations also according to the whims and fancies of the poet but the most common and most known and most asked form of stanza patterns have been discussed today in this video lecture so that was all for today and i'm sure you all must have understood it and uh, if yes then please don't forget to like share subscribe and comment thank you